Could you first of all introduce yourselves? Hello people, I'm Nick and I'm from Pulp and I play the drums in the group. And hello, I'm Candid and I play keyboards in the group. A uh, new album coming out, right? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, this is hardcore, it's called, I think. It's not. It's no Black Flag, right? No Black Flag. Uh, That's hardcore. Oh, and it's not hardcore punk, no. No, nothing like that. No, 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 no. Far no from way. it. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Took you a while to write it, didn't it? Well, it, it, it does take a long time. I mean, you know, writing any music, I think that, you know, you want to stand the test of time then you've got to you've got to put the hours in to a lot of these things you know gone are the days when you could just you know thrash an album out in a couple of weeks you know the you, the actual writing's got to be you know uh, got to take time things have got to settle in and then you know the, these modern studios they might all be all this fancy technology but you know it takes twice as long with all this fancy technology for some reason I don't know why mm-hmm Well, it makes sense because, I mean, you got all that fancy technology, you want to use it right. I mean, I'm sure most of the time it's reading the instruction book, <laughs> find out how to use it. Well, yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. Just to get, you know, all this, getting all spots on. I don't do fruit, Candid. Of course not. You don't do fruit? <laughs> not today, no. You do grapes. I do grapes, yeah. In a drink? I do. I love some now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, how do you guys work, actually? I mean,. Very hard. <laughs> <laughs> Very hard. What do you mean in uh, actually the writing process? Uh, well, generally the music all comes first. That that, that is is always you know, the, the first thing. It generally, we start off by just I suppose jamming together and coming up with you got to come up with ideas, little bits of songs, and I think uh, we ended up with I don't know, a couple of hundred little bits of songs, or you know, a few chords and snippets and. We'd always listen back to them sort of every, every now and again and we'd just laugh. Watch those hiccups. Mm-hmm. We'd always be, we'd, we'd find it very funny to the rubbish we'd come out with. But gradually over the over the weeks and weeks, those those loads of snippets would get, you know, bits would get added to other bits and that would be stuck in another bit of song and, and it'd gradually get whittled down and distilled into, you know, sort of 20 songs to be considered candidates for an album. But it takes a long time to get that far. It's like evolution. Uh, now, when people think of uh, Pulp, they think uh, Jarvis Cocker and they think he's uh, probably the band dictator or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're here to prove he isn't. It's a fight. It's a strong fight. You have to keep him in his place. Now, he used to, in, uh, in the early days, he used to be more of a dictator than he, he is now. He used to be a nightmare to be in a group in, to be in a group with. Really? Yeah, but he's improved with age. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. yeah, because I mean, how long have you been together now? Well, we've been together a long time. The Longer than most biggest. marriages, right? Longer than many marriages These put days. together, yeah. Well, Jarvis did start the group when he was in school, and I'm, I've been in there for 11 years, Canada for about 14, is it? Mm-hmm. So that's that is, you know, you could probably get, you know, a career out of three or four bands in that time. Maybe even more these days. So it's quite a unique. But you you never get on the verge of killing each other. Um, I'm sure we, we have thoughts in our minds, but we we, we would never do it. <laughs> you get along, yeah. Well, I guess you have to. I mean, I I we, we used to each other like you know, like you might have a favourite pair of slippers. You know, they're just kind of comfortable. So we just used to, you know, the same the same face has been around. You know. The same worn, haggard faces. It's it's an excellent album, by the way. I mean, of course, everybody like says that just to no. Well, don't yeah, they polite. do, but we don't. Yeah, tell us the truth. <laughs> we need to know. We're going to find out sooner or later. Uh, I hear some like uh, what I would say were maybe typical pop songs, but I also hear uh, new influences like classical music. Well, that's quite unusual because I suppose the, the person who was most into classical music was Russell, and uh, he left before the record was started. But I, um, Mark likes quite a lot of bad classical music. I like good classical music. Ca- I've always classic. liked classical music. <laughs> classical. <laughs> I've always well, liked classical yeah, music. We've, all, we've always uh, really liked a lot of you know, soundtrack music, like John Barry and sort of, I suppose, Burt Bacharach and things like that. So. The influence of, sort of that sort of big sort of string sounds and things like that have, you know, uh, their roots are in that 
that field. Yeah, you know, we all we all like good at films, don't we? <laughs> yeah, I mean, would you ever like write a soundtrack, a complete soundtrack? If we had the time, it'd be yeah, good. It'd be fun to do because it wouldn't feel like you've got the the limitations of pulp round you. Not that there are particular limitations, but when you're doing a soundtrack, it's completely different to having to think up some kind of pop song. Yeah, you wouldn't have to say, "Oh, you've got to," you know, you have to write. And it's going to be three know, and a half minutes. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really good. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, uh, British cinema is uh, booming right now, so. Yeah. Nobody well, asks you? Uh, well, yeah, it is actually. I suppose we do actually. We we do turn it down sometimes. Funnily enough, don't we? We do, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It is coming up a bit. I mean, it's always kind of knocking on the door. But uh, I suppose there's been a few films that recently that have been doing quite well. Um, I was reading this article in Time Out, and uh, in that pulp was uh, blamed for the revival of the whole uh, '70s uh, glamorous <laughs> glow up. <laughs> okay, edit, edit. I'll cut that out. Glamorous look. What do you think of that? Fair enough. <laughs> it probably is, but then uh, there's always when when there's something is I suppose uh, got its prominence. There's always people who uh, will totally shun that and go for the thing that is seen as the complete opposite of what is in fashion and try to be anti-fashion. So I suppose in ten years ago, I suppose the pulp look would have seen as a kind of anti-fashion, but you know because things kind of go around in cycles, it has now become I suppose fashion. So in a way. I suppose the, the the blame could be laid at certain person's door. Yeah, I mean, do you think uh, you actually triggered that? I don't know. Um, also triggered, just as part of. I mean, the history always repeats itself with fashions and with music, and I, I don't know if we were responsible for it or if it was going to happen anyway. I don't know. Um, please, Nick. Yes, I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a sip of my water as well. <laughs> oh, sorry, didn't, didn't mind. Uh, well, you want your biscuit, don't you? No, no. Oh. oh, you don't want my biscuit. <laughs> um, well, I guess it's uh, kind of uh, hard to talk about the lyrics with you guys, but in uh, in general, I'd say um, uh, your songs have these. Like really common topics, like everyday themes, but then again, you're like totally stylish and glamorous. Somehow that seems such a contradiction. How how do you unite that? Like you answer that one, Nick. Well, I suppose um, the actual subject matter of everyday things is less so on this this new record. Um, I, I don't suppose people really want to hear about the you know uh, the problems of of being uh, famous so much. Uh, but I suppose there is there's a kind of a, a, a glamour in everyday things it's out there. It's difficult to say exactly what, but you know, it, just because you, know, you might be an ordinary person just doing, a, say, a, a mundane job, doesn't necessarily mean that you shouldn't aspire to to having a, a you know, glamorous feeling about who you are. Even if it is if you're a school cleaner, just having a you know, maybe a bit of bit of glitter eyeshadow. Uh, you know, and stamping your individuality on and saying, "Yeah, hey, yeah. I might be just a cleaner, but hey, I want to be glamorous too." There's a lot of sex on it as well. Mm, well, you know, you. you know what they say. <laughs> you know what they say. Those who don't get it talk about it. Is that true? You think? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to think. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's always talking about sex. He's, he's a bit, a, a, a bit, yeah, a bit retarded in that way. Uh, I was uh, checking the internet uh, about pulp, like everybody does, I guess, and I found some really in-depth information about you guys. Uh, for instance, you are supposed to like plastic jewellery. Yes, sure. that, that, that has been the bane of my life, I must admit, because I used to work in a toy shop, and I, so everyone thought, because I work in a toy shop, I love toys, and I do like toys, but I don't particularly want loads. And I ha- like yeah, and I have had loads, I've had so much plastic stuff sent to me, you wouldn't believe it. That I kind of went off it a bit. You see, I've got these on. Oh, that is plastic. That was a <laughs> <laughs> that was a present from Japan. This one, that that's not plastic it's like at a all. Belt. Yeah, it's that's, good, isn't it? That's nice. Eh? I mean, then then Japan must be paradise for you, or not? Yeah, but you know, I've grown out of the plastic thing. That was more when I was like up to being twenty five. I'm thirty four now, so. So they should update the internet. Oh right, yeah, they should. Yeah, it's it's their fault. That's it. You have to put somewhere else. I've, I must admit, I've not even I've not even. What do they surf? I've not even surfed on the internet. 
Clearly, you haven't. I think no, I haven't got one. The, I haven't got the trick is the trick is with that. I think is to say you're into something you really, really want. Like I know you could say I'm really into, yeah. you know, money. I don't people send you loads of that. But be a bit silly to say that. Yeah. And you were born in Holland, right? Well, uh, no, I wasn't. You weren't? <laughs> no, I've never heard that before, no. Ah, oh, lies, lies. Fuck. No, no, you can't say that on the radio. No, oh, I can. <laughs> no, you can. And right. you can. Well, we, can we, you? we don't, we're nice people, we don't swear on the All radio. Right. That's yeah. no problem. <laughs> All right. See, we're oh. just repressed English people. <laughs> no, I don't. Where, where did you hear that? That I was born on in the Holland. net as well. Well, uh, the net is. Oh, see, that's that's the net for you. See, you yeah. don't know if you, you know if you're getting the right information because that's not true. Where I was, did you get that from? I was born. I was born in Rotherham, which is <laughs> <laughs> just, just outside Sheffield. Oh, then somebody must have gotten gotten that wrong because then it said. I think it said Rotterdam. So. Ah, oh. Rotherham. Yeah. Rotterdam, Rotherham, very similar, oh, but miles apart. Oh, that's there you go. Oh. That's Rotterdam, it. Yeah. not Rotterdam. No, that's what you get. I mean, well, there's sure lots Rotterdam. of crazy stuff on there. Yeah, I'm sure Rotterdam's quite similar to Rotherham, just probably a bit bigger <laughs> mm, and near no. the sea. Mm-hmm. A bit more cultured, yeah. maybe. A bit seedy though, isn't it, Rotterdam? Uh, uh, what 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 is the craziest gossip ever written about you? Nick was born in Holland. That's pretty crazy to start <laughs> with. That's pretty crazy to start with. Um, uh, it's a crazy bit of gossip. Um, Jarvis gets the most gossip about him. And it usually is true. <laughs> and crazy. <gasps> I can't think of any gossip about me. That's certainly not unusual stuff. Um, I know that... I'm, you know, it's, it's one of those things... Uh, you, when, in an hour's time we go yeah. oh what about that bit yeah. oh what about that what about that bit I can't think of any at the moment yeah because I mean over here uh, British press has a reputation for like writing crazy stuff yeah they do especially the uh, you know the, the British media the tabloid media do tend to kind of just make their own news up all the time they, they make, or, or take just a very small a trivial thing and, and expand it into something that and then it becomes something that it isn't. I mean, uh, we we did sort of, you know, uh, when the sort of freezing whiz came out, they, we did sort of meet that head on because they kind of, uh, it, it, it seemed like a, a day when not much news or scandalous news happened. So they had to think, well, we're going to put on the front cover. Uh, Pulp have got this record sleeve out and and to put it on the front pages and all this. And it just went silly because we never thought of, of as think oh we'll do this and we've got to be controversial and it's going to get you know, this you know reputation it was just like what are they on about it's, it's stupid and then and they all just kind of got out of hand and, and, and all a bit silly and then and then the actual trying to you know plant drugs on Russell and things like that it was just it was just very excuse cool. me no they, we played a concert in uh, in Cambridge and uh, it was Russell went out for a walk and this this young lad sort of uh, approached him in, in the street and was sort of saying yeah, yeah do you want uh, some speed here yeah, yeah, have this you know and Russell like going, don't want to know that no, take off and he was, he was thinking that's a bit strange he, know, he, he noticed like in a doorway a bit away there's a photographer there with a with the with the long lens so they obviously were trying to get him kind of going oh cheers nice one yeah and get it, trying to set up this great pulp hypocrite sort of uh, headline. No way, that's crazy. That's what happens, kid. Yeah, because what what we hear is like when the NME likes you, the melody maker has to slag you, and the other way around. Well, that's it. You know, one week the enemy will love you, the next week they'll hate you. We've not really had that though. We also, yeah. I mean, they never really. We didn't really. We didn't much. really get to be famous by having a lot of good press. We, I think we did get there on our own work. We wasn't, you know, like some groups. Some so groups get put on the front cover before they even had a record out. Yeah. None of that. So hopefully, because they didn't build us up, hopefully they won't be able to knock us down so easily. Yeah. Do you think it's an advantage that you have been together such a long time before you got famous? Uh, I, d- I don't know. I mean, maybe it's because. I don't, I don't know, that's really hard to say. I mean, Mark hasn't been in for long. Although Mark has been around for a long time. He hasn't been in the group. He's in the group maybe th- coming up for three years or something. But he's always been there somewhere. Yeah, but do you maybe feel, like, less dependent on how how other people react to what you're doing? Why? You know, like, I mean... Well, if, if you're a, a band that's starting out fresh, it's I guess it's... Uh, a, a, and you really need to press to build you up... Oh, well, I, I think that would, that position would be awful to be in, and I wouldn't want anything to do with any group like that. 
I wouldn't want to be in a group where someone else picked the people, where, where the people were picked by management or something. I think the way we've got together is the best way. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. <clears throat> I mean, it's a. I think it, it is a. For me, I think it's an advantage that we've been together for a long time. I mean, I think if you were forming a group now, I wouldn't say stick around for 10 years and then try and get successful. It's only because you're kind of using hindsight to look back and sort of say, oh, I'm glad it's happened that way. Because it, it's. I can't think of any other group that's ever happened to. And I think it's really unique and I'm quite proud of that in a way. Because it's. It no one else can touch us for longevity of unsuccessfulness followed by success mm-hmm. um, your album isn't out yet but I guess it's uh, it's been around for promotion uh, uh, how have the reactions been to it so far? Uh, everyone seems to have liked it which has surprised me they all say it took a while to grow on them but that they do end up liking it which is very good I mean yeah I mean, so it's, it's, we haven't really had any uh, any uh, critical reviews yet but you know feedback has been you know pretty positive so far which which is nice I mean uh, it's, it's always difficult you know because you expect you know the critics because obviously they're going to have a jaded musical palette so to speak that they might sort of be saying oh you heard it all before that kind of thing but so far what we seem to be understanding is that people have been been positive about it and saying that it's you know it's up there Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you.